Previously on The Code, life with the HSBC Waratahs. OK, see the guy with the helmet on? Try and aim for him out the back, all right? He's got a helmet on, so it doesn't matter. We've met all the players. We've got the jersey signs, the ball signs. Great scrum, Caddy. Drew Mitchell, he beat one, he beat two. What a try. I have heard that I'm not known to be the best driver, so I get the role as the navigator. Why don't you just go into the left-hand lane and go straight through? <laughs> we do it every year. It's a bit of fun. Um, the guys get to wear their club rugby uh, gear. They train in that. Hi, I'm Kim the number one Waratahs fan. Get a fat pass! The ball pass! A lot of organisations uh, form alliances with a lot of different charities. Uh, you know, I thought it was really important for, for the Waratahs to uh, you know, put all the eggs in one basket. It's hugely exciting for me to be to be getting my first start and, and for it to be a home game. So that was a really special feeling for me. If you do, no one will stay with us. All right? No one. The wives and girlfriends of the HSBC Waratahs not only play a large role in their partners' lives, but many also have an active role in the team family. One such partner is Lauren Moen. I met Ben at a bar, the GPO. Uh, and got introduced to Lauren, I caught her checking me out. Caught Ben's eye across the bar and um, he ended up coming over and having a chat with me and asked for my phone number. First thing she said to me was, I don't want to date you because you're a footballer. Which, <laughs> which I had to try and make the adjustment too, but... From there, we've, um, we've kind of been together ever since. What was his last name? Uh-huh. Um, it was a Mexican. No, it was Jerry Lopez. Lopez. Boy. Jerry Lopez, he's called. Spanish. Mm. Hawaiian. Yeah. <laughs> we moved down to Sydney about three and a half years ago. It was a bit of an adjustment period because we did have a lot of friends and all our family in Brisbane. But it's been an enjoyable one and, and one that we look forward to staying on with. The Waratahs have been very welcoming and Sydney is a wonderful place. We've absolutely established ourselves down here and we really love it. But what happens when not one but both partners have a career in playing sport? Such is the case for Dave Dennis and his partner, Australian netballer Monia Girard. She's a pretty uh, easygoing girl and pretty carefree and doesn't seem to take the netball too seriously or, or life too seriously. Just get the body check in place. My memory is the elbow. <laughs> He's pretty competitive, I have to admit, um, especially with having older brothers and a younger brother. He's always forever trying to hold his own. Yeah, having, having Monty and playing professional sport obviously uh, helps us uh, understand each other, so I obviously know her commitments and she knows, she, she knows mine. Um, the dynamics between Dave and I in our uh, relevant sports, it, it does rub off uh, when we do trainings and when we have competitions. And we both know what it takes to perform at a, at a high level, which is needed in your sport. She's as involved in the team as I am. Um, we were just watching TV the other day and a highlight came up of the Super Rugby season ahead and she turned to me and said I can't wait to go watch the Tars play because she loves sitting in the stands and watching the guys that she's come uh, to know and love perform. I love watching the games. I think they're so much fun. The games don't always go the way that the Waratahs would like them for, to go but it's always a lot of fun. Fun is not a word that would best describe the season so far for the Australian Conference favourites. But a run of three straight wins has seen the return of a buoyant confidence and a genuine belief that the season's goals can still be met. Thank you, Chrissy. Did you scare those roosters, bikes? Win, lose or draw, the squad continues with its routine, mindful that two away games are approaching against the best-placed Aussie and Kiwi teams. Just getting over that sort of... Yes, that's how we want it. In an effort to relieve the pressure, yet keep their competitive edge, 
Drew Mitchell and Brendan McKibben challenge each other in a game that has painful repercussions. G A. Gaznia. Uh -oh. ah! ah! Show me! No, no, I can't believe it. Okay, wait, wait. Don't, don't be. A... You're gonna load up on this I one. I got to want this to break. I gotta lift weights. Yeah, I know. Ooh. Oh, wait, wait, wait! <laughs> okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's it! That's it! Yes, it is! Yeah. Oh. So it's the Super 14 semi final from Newlands in Cape Town, and Beric Barnes gets us underway. Waratah players and fans do not have to look too far into the past to recall the disappointments of lost opportunities. Goes across now, the Yong off that... Oh, gee, that's a... Falling short of the final in 2010 has been a catalyst for redemption in 2011. The Stormers are through to the final of the 2010 investment. At the start of the season, the goals and objectives were clear and uncompromising. Although the team came came third and, and, we, and we travelled across to South Africa and got beat in a semi, the aim was to get to the final. There was some satisfaction with some of the achievements in, in uh, 2010. I think ultimately the players felt uh, missing out on that final was still a disappointment. Yeah, in that semi-final I think we just got out-muscled. It's such a fine line I think between winning those games and losing them and there's certainly turning points in the game. That we didn't win the thing so it wasn't, ultimately it wasn't a success. We, uh, we came third, not first. After the game it felt disappointing but throughout the game there were times where we actually were on the upper hand but uh, in saying that just overall general disappointment just within ourselves as a group. We can build a lot from uh, last year's performances. I think uh, there were some, again, massive improvements in the attack side of the play, and I think that's something that we can continue to develop. The expectations I think we need to have is to perform well early. Um, we've got a number of big games early on that we really need to, to dominate, and if we can start well, then I think we are capable of some pretty special things. It gets you pretty excited that if we could come third last year with a pretty, a pretty raw squad, a pretty new squad, there's some exciting things ahead for 2011. Just want to win the Super 15, that's it. Win the Super 15. Look, first and foremost though, we want to win the competition. That, that's, that's our goal. There's steps to success for us and, and we have to stage the season. The aim for 2011 is, is to be the championship team. Here at the HSBC Waratahs, um, we're involved in plenty of charity events and always looking to support as many causes as we can. Um, the Cerebral Palsy Foundation is our primary charity and um, along with doing various events um, to raise money and support them as much as we can, we also look to um, help a diverse range of charities and tonight we've got a pretty um, interesting event which a few of the boys are heading down to and are going to be um, taking part in. Um, it's actually called the Brave Hearts Splish Splash Celebrity Dash which essentially raises money um, for children and their families of, um, who have been affected by um, sexual assault. The event tonight is um, based down at the Sydney Football Stadium uh, swimming pool and uh, down there it's um, going to be a gala event featuring media, media celebrities and also sporting celebrities and it's going to be quite exciting because the showpiece race tonight is actually a battle of the codes with four of our guys going down there. We've got uh, Greg Peterson, uh, Kane Douglas, Jeremy Tills and Brendan McKibben. So it's going to be a great, great night um, and hopefully raise plenty of money for the Bravehearts charity. Nice ones you got there, we'll keep them on. If I take my shirt off, I'll be like, I got stuck by a bee. I don't normally look like this. It's a swimming race, 4x50. We're against um, a few other sporting codes. So we're both seeing the cricket, um, the AFL team and Sydney FC. And so I'll probably back the Sydney Swans to go all right. They look pretty fit. But um, the soccer boys don't look like they've been in the water for a while. And I don't know how the cricketers will go. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be, should be pretty fun. A 
two-game mini-tour starting in Auckland provides the squad with their toughest away assignment so far this year. A grey and rainy North Island does little to settle the nerves of the depleted HSBC Waratah squad. High performance analyst Anthony Wakelin is used to dealing with difficult technical problems as part of his everyday job. Um, so you can get the PC input on the, on, the, on the TV. You can change the channel on the side of the telly. It's not his finish. Tread on his remote and bust it. <laughs> now he can't watch telly while he's getting rid of it. It's really good. He's been, been officially the coach for two months and it's taken him that long to turn into a prima donna. <laughs> Tending to assistant coach Scott Bowen's TV remote troubles is trivial compared with the responsibility that the man they call Mudge carries into every game. I match their role pretty much to facilitate the coaches at game analysis purposes. So we, all the boxes are set up. Similarly, we've got a monitor with with a video feed in. I take that out, um, run it through some hardware to get a digital signal into a couple of laptops that I set up so the coaches can monitor live stats and, and video. Hello. It'll be clear and then there'll be a shower and then it'll be clear again, that kind of shit. Right, man, we'll see when you get out of it. All right, so I'm all set up, ready to go. I'll be sitting just here. Michael Foley will be sitting next to me and then Chris sits next to him. Um, so now I'm, I'm set up, I've tested everything, I'm right to go. And right to go is exactly what the Auckland Blues are ready to do. We've got to get back to our feet and fight hard to hold that space. We just say to uh, Benny Moen there on the touchline, get our spacing in D, 10, 20, 30. Comes again for Matthewson, pops a nice short pass, Braid now, close to the line. Matthewson again, and Moen scores! Oh, the front row's doing it on their own! Far for the Blues, and off it goes now to Brent. They come at them again through McAllister, stabbing another one through. Awkward tactic in this weather. Oh, they've made a mess of it, and Jared Payne has scored. He had the call engaged. I don't know if it was you know, fair. Come on, you guys. And there it comes now. Stephen Brett moves it on. McAllister running hard. Tackle hang. Pops the ball off, brilliantly taken by Toy Arbor. Stepping, fending, operating, trying. A break in play allows assistant coach Michael Foley to make a prophetic okay, prediction. Big time out, this bloke's in the whole world of hurt here. What happened, do you know? I don't know. If we defend well and build pressure through our defence and we play direct with our attack, we'll, build, we'll get this score back. Now it comes for Burgess, still playing advantage. In fact, a fresh advantage. They swing it wide to Mum. We've got a few numbers there, I would have thought. But now, get it now out to the back line. Hullingahu! Yeah. Well done, Hank. Scores and at last the Waratahs have got some points on the board. Just give Kano a pat on the ass. That was a fantastic carry. Give him a little tap on the ass there. Let him know he did well. And keep the pressure on. That's good stuff. Keep the pressure on. Almost lost, but they've still got a cross switches play. Not a great pass, but picked up by Beal. He gets it away to Turner. Turner gets it away inside him, and it's another try as it Mitchell's in. Beal now. Punching onto it, Mitchell, he's so dangerous. Still going, Mitchell gets the fin going. Boric has to make the tackle. Burgess goes to the left and Mitchell, Cross now. Ryan Cross has a go, over. And the game ends. Smiley takes it out over the touchline and the Blues get a valuable five points. They've beaten the Waratahs by 31 points to 17. The reality is, it's a commentary about us as men. What, what that second half reflected was that there are a lot of good men in this team. We're all good men, honourably proud to be part of it. But you can't get away from the fact that we've had a couple of situations this season, like that first half, where it's not an accurate commentary of who we are. One thing we, we can't forget is that that, that side we played is a, is a very, very good team. I mean, if you give them opportunities, they'll, they'll take it. And unfortunately, in the first half, for, for whatever reason, we gave them some opportunities. 
and and they took them and you really got stuck into us. Make sure in the first minutes of the game that it counts. Not because of strategy, because it matters that you don't want to look like next year down. We got pumped, there's no way of getting around that. The, the mood was okay in the second half because I think we, sh we showed, the team showed themselves at least, that they're, they're capable of mixing it with that side and if they play good footy they, they can put the points on. So, as I said, the mood in the first half was, was, was you know, almost shock. Sure, but you remember what you did tonight in that second half. You played like who you are, good men, and not without being part of it. That's the most important thing in every game for the rest of this year. They scored five tries in the first half and, and that, that's genuinely disappointing. You know, we've got to move on, move on from that and get ready for the Reds this week. Along with the responsibilities of being a professional sports person come various player events for team sponsors and partners. One such event is the Waratah Legends Golf Day. Yes. <laughs> is that Birdie? Birdie. Birdie. Is that Birdie? Birdie. <laughs> the Waratahs Legends Golf Day is a partnership leveraging event. All our partners have the ability to engage players and host events aimed at maximising their relationship with the team. This partner sponsors our alumni group, uh, so this event was based around past and present players. Yeah, no, good. I met him, uh, met him for the first time today, which is normally how the uh, golf days work, but uh, they're all contributing, so it's good. good some good banter. A couple of jokes. An old guy, an Irishman, and hurry up and give back. <laughs> <laughs> These are great events for the players to, to get a break from training and to meet some people from the corporate world. It's also a fantastic way for our partners to integrate with the brand and align themselves with some high-profile athletes. Oh, great shot, Ryan. Hey. That's the one, hey. well, a lot of these guys are very keen golfers. Phil, in particular. It's been a good day. I've been, uh, as I said, really fortunate to be in a good group. So uh, um, hopefully we we feature on the podium at the end. We've got some good players with us, fortunately. Um, I'm certainly a passenger in this crew. All these days where they get out of training, they're still pretty competitive, and there'll be a, a lot of niggle out on the course, I'm sure. Well, as I said, Al Baxter. I mean, he's just so sensible. He actually plays off the ladies' tees. Nice and easy swing, straight down the middle every time. Very delicate. <laughs> it's a bit of fun. Uh, we get to have a hit with the guys. Uh, it's usually uh, good for the guys if they don't get one of us because we most of us are rubbish golfers. But uh, it's uh, a good day where you uh, get to chat with the people who pay most of our bills. A week later, and the entire rugby community turns its attention to Brisbane for the anticipated matchup between the long-term rivals. Under the stadium, which was encased in floodwaters several months earlier, the team settles into its temporary changing facilities. In the press box, Fairfax journalist Jamie Pandaran prepares for his own 80-minute adventure. I would get to a game um, at least an hour beforehand um, to make sure on top of any late changes, watch the warm-ups, see if there's anything going on. It'll be very interesting to see how Tamani goes tonight. You sort of work towards uh, a f final siren deadline, so no more than five minutes after the final whistle. Uh, my copy has to be into the um, system. Most people will know the result of the game off the TV, so newspapers are, are kind of have to go beyond that and this year's Waratahs have given Jamie much to write about. It's been a real battle for the Tars to win over a good number of their spectators, and that will only come with a, a super title. Now Robinson, oh, Cliff Parlett came in from the side. Right day, boys! Right day! Injured Berwick Barnes Field watches the game from the dugout and gets a front row seat to a season-ending injury. Yeah, 
Come on, come on, come on, Virgie! Oh, Jesus! Oh, he's dead. Oh, his ankle snapped. Drew, his ankle snapped. Oh, Drew Mitchell has hurt himself in back play. Oh, my oh, goodness. His ankle. Drew Mitchell, in the best form of his life, is dealt a cruel hand by the footballing gods. Well, that's very disappointing for the Waratahs and also Drew Mitchell. Let's hope he's back on the field in the next couple of months. Scrum on halfway. Big Capitalising on the disruption, Queensland strike. He gets it away to Cooper. Cooper showing and, and going. Cooper. Cooper dummying. Quay Cooper. Absolutely brilliant. Now it's back to Cooper. We'll get another crack at it. And the crowd says this tells the story. Despite a sustained period of pressure in the second half, the HSBC Waratahs fall inches short of securing a second win over Queensland this season. So what we're saying is that's a collapsed ball, unplayable. Correct. Turnover ball. Thank you. 45 metres out. They like it. They love it in the stands. And now the Waratahs have it from the restart. Almost. And as the time slowly ticks away, the passionate Reds crowd find their voice in the dying seconds. Mum, he's in the touch. That's the ball game. Seven long years of heartache. Can you just um, expand a little bit, Phil, on um, not evening it up? What, what do you think happened there? It's a pretty, pretty big blow. Um, just in terms of your season now, you've probably been one of your form players. If you had your time over again, would you have taken a uh, shot at goal earlier? or do you Jamie's think you... questions are without answers. But there are two certainties. Queensland can add to their trophy cabinet, and New South Wales are close to elimination from finals contention. The HSBC Waratahs have reached the halfway point of the season. And while on-field results have been mixed, this does nothing to deter from the spirit and resolve of the organisation. In the coming weeks, the team will be faced with more challenging times against fearless opponents. Their final spot is far from assured, but rugby is often less about results and more about the journey. A journey in which they will enter the final two months with everything to lose. A pedigree, history and reputation mean nothing in the heat of competition. But such is the way of the Waratahs. You learn to expect the unexpected.